Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2, the Honor Mode Plus run. My name is Saiken and we're playing on the hardest difficulty, plus we're increasing the enemy's uh, level just a little bit to match our level plus two. The next episode will feature uh, the ruler of Castle um, Joy, uh, for Joy rather, and we're going to have an interesting fight. Is he plus both of his high priests, a couple of guards, and a poor soul that's being converted will all fight against us. This time, hopefully, we're going to go through the combat without having any casualties. I pretty much beefed up uh, Ethan here. He should be able to withstand uh, fighting in melee. At least I hope so. And in order to start this battle, let's prepare the area just a tiny bit. You could go and extensively pull all of them uh, even further back. There is an option to fight this battle by using the high ground here and essentially pulling them out of the gates. I found that that is almost overkill. If you funnel them through the door, chances are that if you position yourself well enough, you won't have any problems at all. Closest stands here. Ethan basically is going to go in. One of the things I should mention is I upgraded Saiken's uh, mem uh, memory skills, so he now also has armor, frost, and fortify. Probably should have done that a bit earlier. Uh, that way, we're having two cooldowns for uh, armor, frost, and two cooldowns for fortify, which means not only Lowe's is going to use uh, them, Saiken uh, might as well be able to heal, uh, and that should stabilize uh, the party quite a bit. So here we go. Ethan is buffed up. And you can see we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven enemies, all of them massively buffed up. Let's send in an incarnate. There we go, good. Ifan simply takes a nice little leap behind here. And let's prepare for them. Armor up. They're all quite leveled, most of them level 9. Almost a thousand hit points, so 550 plus a pretty fair amount, uh, pretty sizable amount of physical armor. Good. So Saiken rebuffs Ethan. Very soon we're, uh, we should be joining the combat, to be honest.
Yeah, the incarnate is going to die pretty soon. Surprised that it even had three rounds. Yeah, hit for 108. The Bouncing Shield unfortunately deals as much damage as uh, the Shield um, has as uh, Armor Class, since those guys are already level 9. They have a fine amount of Armor Class. Good. So Saiken Sy is going to act soon, which means we're not going to uh, conjure the Incarnate, uh, but yet. Instead, make sure that all of this here is covered in water. Ifan is going to tank them. And let's summon a totem. Okay. So far, so good. continue um, getting this guy here down we want to basically change everything into poison and further slow them down very nice Saiken's skills uh, are cheaper now since he's standing in poison himself thanks uh, to elemental affinity there we go nice So we almost uh, broke their magical resistance. Unfortunately, we can't throw a trap there. I think that would have been the right decision. Instead, let's apply poison. Hit both of them. And continue to hit them. Very nice. We slowed them down substantially. Now, here is where it is going to get interesting. Let's put the High Lord right in the middle of them. Deals a nice amount of physical damage on top of it. I still don't want to summon the Incarnate. Because we're soon going to ignite all of this here. Good. How do we... How does the physical armor look? Still pretty decent. Magister Swordsman here. Does not have any magic resistance, so we can sleep him. Um, let's 
Let's make sure we deal the most amount of damage. Good. We're going to sleep the Magister Swordsman. There you go. At least one of them is controlled. And as soon as their physical armor is gone, we can start controlling the rest of them. So. Fortunately, they still have way too much magical armor. There's a way of how we can deal with that. Nice little shot. It's all three of them. Beautiful damage. Physical hits for a hundred. Gosh, that's annoying. This banner here is preventing us from throwing the trap. Equally annoying. Okay, anyways. That killed one of them. And let's make ourselves invisible. Wow. <laughs> All right. That was a lot of damage. Ethan certainly needs healing. And some physical armor. Also putting an incarnate down. Which begins to burn both of them. 59 points of damage. Pretty solid. They have way too much physical armor. I want to crowd control them, but like 400 uh, armor, what the fuck am I supposed to do? We barely got through their uh, magical resistance. Fortunately, this guy is going to act soon. Hmm. Yeah, we could deal some damage, I suppose. That's okay damage. Certainly nothing to write home about. Could we heal someone? Yes. Can we 
crowd control the ma magister swordman but basic I, I think that's a good idea I mean it's not the most solid crowd control but at least we're moving him back that'll waste a turn and we'll slow him down even further unfortunately he also starts to regenerate which is a pity. This here could be a thing, it would entangle him, but it would also destroy both of the totems and I, matter of fact, think that the totems worked quite well. Let's instead give ourselves some armor, because they are hitting really hard. I would love to explode that guy there. Hmm. Yeah, he's a bit too far away, but exploding him with a corpse explosion definitely uh, moving there is worth it. It's a lot of damage. 125 for both of them. Essentially uh, took down the armor of the high uh, of the high uh, judge. Who shouldn't act? So we're going to give him a knockdown. Although the arrows are valuable. I also want to make sure that we are definitely going to survive this year. Summoning a lot of physical totems now. And let's regain some magical armor because uh, the other high priests are going to join us soon. Specifically, the Pyromancer is going to hurt. Yep, there we go. I told you. He's going to hurt. Luckily for us, the Pyromancer finally is a target. Which we might be able to control because he only has 120 armor. <laughs> which is good. Alright, so... This here should bring down the Overlord, which is true. Let's take some adrenaline. Ah, still some magical armor left. Uh, some physical armor left. But yeah, I think it's worthwhile. I mean, we're in a tough spot here. Am I going to just ignore this guy? And instead move back? Or are we going to crowd control it? And I decide we're going to crowd control it. That's definitely worth the effort. Two rounds of of the Cryomancer not being able to do anything is helpful. 105, holy moly.
There we go. Burning. We're still standing in the middle of the fire. So this here is the thing. Great, he's bleeding. And this takes away the other armor. We need healing. But we can do that just a bit later. Good. Sibyl definitely needs to survive. I'm healing everyone plus Sibyl uh, gets the uncanny evasion. Let's summon another totem. We got the soldier here pretty well under control. The totems are doing a great job. Good, and now it's, a, it's finally time for Ebon to shine. It has been a long, long time since he could do something useful. But I feel now it is... Oh, shit. He only had two action points. I wanted to get both of them into the battle storm because I only would have been able to get one. But fair enough. At least we can get the high judge. Not even that. It's not even uh, game. Oh my gosh. Normally it works way better, but this, these are really bad circumstances. I promise you the build is totally viable. Oh, nice. Holy moly. Let's jump over here. The pyramids are still can act and I am afraid that that's probably going to hurt. We were, if we were able to reposition the pyromancer. I mean, this here is an option. And then essentially closing down the door. Hmm. I think it's probably not worth it. There we go, Paramancer haste himself, which means he can only take one action. Physically, uh, with a melee attack, hits for, for 80. Something's wrong. 
For fuck's sake, that's a lot of damage. Alright, we heal ourselves. Trap deals some damage. And the Cryomancer can act again. But we should be able to um, to crowd control him. I mean, maybe I'm too hard to Ebon. He essentially crowd controlled this guy over here, the Magister Swordman. And then he continued uh, crowd controlling the Cryomancer. There we go. Place the Magister Swordman right there. And let's increase the survivability of Sibyl. Alright, she definitely needs a strong healing potion. There we go. Hmm. We've probably taken the shots first, get Executioner. Yeah, it doesn't matter now. Good. We're running out of methods to crowd control the Cryomancer. Taking away his staff. We certainly could teleport the Cryomancer away. I don't want to do that because... I know that we'll just prolong the combat. Gosh, this guy will not uh, give up. Nice little 136 points of damage through corpse explosion. And let's heal ourselves up. There we go. Necromancy is just so good. And a nice little fireball on top of it. Great. A totem to block him. Some armor frost and some self healing.
Good, so we can could certainly get to him and backstep twice. I think that's the best idea. Okay, so that's one down. So I can... Doesn't have too many hit points left. Might as well drink a medium healing potion. There we go. Let's jump over here. Oh, I was I was under the impression that's tactical retreat. But, uh, it's a little bit late here in the evening. That's my only excuse for the sloppiness. Nice, knockdown. Even back steps and knocks down as well. He still has plenty of magical resistance. I don't want to use any more potions here. So with Sibyl we need to be careful not to take too much damage. But since we have the enemy firmly under control Very nice. Third round in a row. Iban is finding some redemption for himself. And this should be it. Good. That's it, gentlemen. Difficult fight, but no one died. And I think overall we did uh, well. Let's check the loot real quick. The High Judge has a one-handed axe, which we can't really use. Two-handed mace, which is okay. And a bloodied arm, it quite literally does nothing for us. The helmet might be uh, something. Let's double check that real quick.
Uh, isn't too bad. Pyro and Aerotherk. But unfortunately, 12 strength, which is quite a lot. This hatchet here is really good. And yeah, the maze definitely is good as well. Too bad that the helmet requires strength. Well, it's still a really decent helmet. Let's go through our character level ups and then I think we're already done with that session. Yeah, we're running over time. So Ivan still continues with uh, Finesse. And we do have a bit Pyro and Aero now. But at the core of his build, he's going for Warfare. And I would like to give him Hothead. Hothead uh, essentially means as long as he's full of health, he gets more damage. Losa increases her intelligence. Yep, we're having plenty of room for additional skills. That's fine. And yeah, let's keep 13 wits. We're now going for summoning, as you can see. We already got an item that increases summoning a little bit. We have our core schools all uh, set up with uh, two points, uh, more than enough to cast all of the spells, and now we're going for stronger su uh, summonings. She has mnemonic and elemental affinity. That Both of them are um, really good. We could give her hothead um, as well, or far out uh, men. The far out men has the advantage that she can reach um, areas that others couldn't. This here is probably another uh, good contender. I think, just from a skill perspective, I would go for uh, Savage uh, Sortilage uh, with um, our damage dealer because crits will increase the damage. Um, a lot. As for her, Hothead is good. Uh, is good. Uh, Torturer is really good. Yeah, but she's not skilled in necromancy, so that's probably also uh, better for Saiken. In terms of, um, in terms of. Honor mode run if you're not uh, safe uh, and secure what you're doing. Comeback kit isn't bad. So for me, I'm going either Far Out Man or Hothead. The um, more secure version is uh, the Hothead uh, version just to deal some more damage. She often is full health, so that's not bad. Um, I think in my, uh, it might also um, affect the healing portion. Not that we're healing that much, but it's definitely not bad. Okay, so Saiken continues with more intelligence. Um, you can see all of his core uh, schools are being uh, leveled up. He could use a bit more memory. And soon also a bit more wits. I think for him, it absolutely makes sense that we're putting a Savage Sortilage in there. Gives all magical skills a critical uh, chance equal to your uh, to the critical uh, chance score. Um, later, when we're uh, skilling um, Scoundrel with a build, that will help him to. To deal a lot of damage. Uh, this here allows his spells to crit, so we're going with it. As for her, again, let's continue with uh, Finesse. You can see Huntsman 2, 
We got uh, still Pyro 1. You could go for Pyro 2, but both of the skills that we need, including the explosive traps, are already in uh, Pyro 1, so we don't need that. Uh, one could go for Scoundrel 2 um, for some other uh, for some additional abilities, but uh, to be quite honest, the one that we want, uh, which is Adrenaline, we already got that, so we don't necessarily need it. And Warfare 10 um, would increases our damage so much that it's definitely useful. So as for her, I mean the Glass Cannon. Um, is certainly an absolute monster on her um, simply uh, giving her more ability points she already has executioner and hardhead so that's good we don't want to uh, make her an elemental ranger um, that would uh, give uh, this plus error recovery is uh, certainly helpful for her you know i mean there are a few really solid options for her from the top of my head I noted down my build somewhere, but from the top of my head, um, I think Glass Cannon is probably the way to go here. Yeah, she doesn't need Mnemonic uh, yet. The build is really centered around dealing an incredible amount of damage, and she has all of the skills. She often auto attacks, so that's not a problem. Picture of health. Um, as well as Dr. Kuz, all of uh, these skills are only useful if you don't know what you're doing and re uh, position her badly. Comeback hit is okay. Um, I'm I'm torn in between error recovery, which I think we don't necessarily need. Or a glass cannon. I think we're going uh, with glass cannon. Maximum a a AP to begin with. And we're not being protected from status effects. Which is not a big um, deal for us anyways. Because let's face it. She is almost never protected from status effects. So might as well go for it. She has such little armor and magic resist uh, compared to the strengths of the enemies. She's almost a one-shot. And having two additional um, ability points certainly will uh, increase her damage output considerably. Anyways, this is it, guys. We are done with the castle. Uh, we are whooping level 8, which I wouldn't have uh, guessed as possible. But yeah, we leveled quite fast. Next up, in our next video, we are going to explore a bit of the wilderness. I will do most of the wilderness exploration off screen because the traveling time is not uh, really interesting. For those of you who try to play it the first time, just keep yourself down here at the coast and try to get into the camp, which is down here. We are probably going to uh, now see a couple of selected fights uh, here in the wilderness. One being the fight, uh, the fight with the burning pigs here, one being the fight uh, with uh, the magisters up here. Uh, one being the fight uh, with Bacchus Rex in his uh, cave and probably one being the fight in Bacchus Rex uh, Labyrinth. So two fights right there. So it's almost like still half a dozen uh, fights to go before we can uh, close out Act 1. Most of them are still hard, so um, with the exception of the end fight, uh, which certainly is, uh, yeah, re definitely respectably hard. Um, 
there are a couple of other challenges. We've done most of the difficult stuff by now. So this guy here kind of is a natural break. If you want to do for joy, might as well uh, stop here and uh, then um, uh, play, play as far as I've played and then watch the second half. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you have a comment uh, or any specific remark uh, to the run, feel free to leave it down below. We see each other with the second part of Act 1 in the next episode. Bye-bye.